so today we're going to be doing a bunch of work on this uh, beautiful uh, T100 Toyota. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the ball joints and we're going to be doing the uh, adding some helper springs. Um, this uh, wonderful person that we know uh, hauls water and so he wanted to get some helper springs. So yeah, let's get into the show. This is gonna be more of a little how-to uh, on the ball joints and just kind of walk through it and give you guys some tips and tricks that we have used over the years and hopefully it's uh, good content for you. So let's do this, yeah. So this okay. is our 14 millimeter for the uh, top of the uh, shock. So we'll go ahead and take that off. And then we'll take this bolt off right here, which is to the upper ball joint, which allows us to drop this arm down. And then we'll have some flexibility on our spindle here with the uh, disc brake. And then we can get to this uh, bolt back here for the lower ball joint. And then we'll pop that off. So let me get an extension. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, this arm is attached to it. It's got a spindle going through it, but it's really tightly wedged in there. So we have to use, we use these forks to separate it and force it down. When it's all done, you'll be able to see exactly what we were talking about as far as how the spindle fits in there. Dave told me to get the big hammer. And that's all there is to it. I thought there was an earthquake. All right, so you can see how the spindle is, it's got a slight shape to it and it fits down in, in here. It's really tight and so that's what, what you're trying to separate. It definitely ruins your, uh, your ball joint there as far as your boot but we're replacing these so that's no problem at all i think that's enough to do it okay. so right down Not here that one. Oh, down there okay. is a cutter pin and he put it up against this wall okay. the back of the um arm So we have to remove this nut. And so it's on there pretty tight. And so we put on a, a bar that kind of adds a little bit of extension. It gives you a little bit more uh, torquing ability. So a little and bit more what leverage. What bolt are we specifically taking off? Uh, this <laughs> lower ball joint bolt, I <laughs> <Yeah>. guess. <laughs> okay, yep. I'll try to do this without busting a, busting a, Oh, okay. Well, that went pretty easy. There you go. Look at that. It's definitely not recommended to use your ratchet as a breaker bar, but sometimes that's the quickest way. You got the wrong ball joints, sir. They don't work? No. Not even on the same side. So that's, that's a different this kind is too. Different. That's wrong. Yep, that one's wrong too. So you're gonna need a different part there too. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that we ran into when one issue is uh, we had the wrong parts as, as we mentioned. Um, with these vehicles, uh, you've got two-wheel drive, you've got four-wheel drive, you've got varying load capacities. So there are several different uh, ball joints that are used. And so that's where the error was with this. So we finally got the ones that we need. So we're going to go ahead and put those on. So uh, this is the, the correct one for the 
a lower ball joint. So we'll, we'll get that put on there and show you how to do that. Now with the old one, it came with a, uh, a crown nut, and you see how on there, but you screw it down and then you put, insert a cotter pin uh, between the crowns and that locks it in place. The new one just has a little, if you can see that, little plastic ring inside of there. And as you tighten it down, that plastic grips the threads and holds it in place. It accomplishes the same thing. Uh, some have a preference for one or the other. Uh, probably the cotter pin approach is a little bit more secure, but it's a lot harder to fool with. So uh, there's just different ways in which it can be done. Uh, when we do the upper one, I'll show you how the cotter pin arrangement works and you'll get a better idea of how that uh, takes place. So one thing you want to do is uh, put on your, your grease uh, connector uh, sometimes they're, when you buy them, they, they do not have this and uh, they're just permanently greased, but with this, in this case, they do have them. And so uh, you'll put that on there. And so later on, if you need to add grease to the ball joint, uh, you just pump it in there and it, it works perfectly fine like that. So. Okay, so that's on there now. Okay, so that's on there. So now what we're gonna do, we got our shock absorber installed. It uh, needs to be locked into place, but uh, we're going to go ahead and lift this unit up and attach it onto here and get our, our uh, nut on there and just torque everything down and everything should be good to go. So, all right, let's do it. was hanging from that we would need to lift up this, this up. still yep. to try to meet it yeah. so we tried uh, attaching the bottom and then uh, jacking it up and connecting it to the top but there's a lot of difficulty with that uh, uh, this the stiffness of the torsion bar here or just it was tending to lift the, the truck up itself so what we did is we decided to do it the other way attach the top first and then reconnect the bottom and so that's what we're in the process of doing it's a lot safer this way and uh, definitely a lot easier Like I mentioned before, there are some of these that have a cotter pin arrangement where you have uh, the crown nut and it's got a hole through the bolt and you slide the cotter pin through and then you can crimp it down and it'll keep the nut from ever sliding off. So we will poke that through there. And just take your, take it and bend that way, that one that way, and this one this way. Now that nut will not come off until you take the cotter pin out. All right, so it is the next day. We wrapped up this beautiful T100. 
We've got the uh, upper and lower ball joints uh, changed out. We changed out the shocks, both front and back. And uh, so we're gonna wrap up the video for today. But we want to give another an announcement is that we would like to give away a iPhone 13 for when we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you like our content, like and subscribe. You'll, hopefully you'll be the winner of the iPhone 13. Yeah, let's do it.